So I'm in a little bit of a dilemma right now because I watched the weather forecast earlier this week and it said that this weekend was supposed to be a rainy weekend and I can tell you yesterday, yesterday was Friday, it wasn't rainy at all. Today isn't raining at all so I'm doubtful if I should shoot my video outside today or just inside. I'm in a little bit of a dilemma right now. But it's not about the weather because I'm used to the Dutch weather. The Dutch weather is always crazy and it's not making sense. So I'm used to that, but it's more about time. Right now I'm on my internship for school. So I don't have a lot of time to make my videos prior to my internship, which started three weeks ago. I had seven days a week to edit my videos, to film my videos. So I had a really relaxed and laid back, but well focused workflow but right now i don't have the same amount of time i went from seven days a week of time to edit and record my videos to two days a week which is the weekend so i had to change certain things about my workflow in order to make the videos i want to make in a less amount of time so i had to change certain things about my editing workflow to edit much faster so that's what i'm going to share with you guys today what did i change about my editing workflow to make it much faster to edit much faster let's talk about it so the first thing i changed about my workflow is knowing what the story slash message actually is before i start recording slash editing because every video has some sort of value a story a message the person wants to communicate with the viewer so what i usually do is i take a couple of hours thinking about what the story will be or what the message i want to convey i want to communicate with you guys because by doing that you know what is relevant to the video and what is not relevant to the video so i'm in premiere pro and cutting down my video i understand what i want to communicate so i know what i need to leave in in order to get my message across but I also know what is not relevant and what is not helping but I also know what is not relevant for my video what isn't helping me communicate my story slash message so I know that I need to cut out the things that are not relevant so by doing this you are not wasting time on thinking about what my story actually is what the message I try to convey is so having a story or message from the beginning will help you cut down your footage and delete the footage that you don't need a lot better so another tip that i have for you guys is try to listen to music when you are not editing when i'm going to my internship i will be there for eight hours a day and i do a lot of administrative work so i work in an office when i do so i am able to listen to music i try to do is instead of listening to music i always do like a travis scott and asap rocky i try to listen to music on epidemic sound why i try to make a library while i'm doing something else if i find something good we'll use in a video i add it to my library <coughs> By doing this, you are listening to music which you are going to use or potentially going to use in the future while you are doing something else. So when I come into the edit, I already have a bunch of tracks listed up for me to listen to and find the right track for my narrative for the video. Because I had a lot of times where I go into an edit, I don't have a track already, so I need to open Epidemic Sound and I need to try to find the right track. But what ends up happening is I waste like, sometimes I waste like two to three hours just finding one perfect song. So instead of doing that, try to do the work beforehand in my case it's on my internship but in your case it could be what reading a book watching tv maybe even in the shower it doesn't really matter when you are doing it but when you are doing something else and you are able to listen to music try to listen to music that you would actually use in a video because if you have a music library list already stacked up with music you have listened to while doing something else you don't have to waste time finding a perfect song for your edit so this is a big one this is one of the things that helps me quite a lot which is stay in the flow a flow state is a state you are in when you are very focused and immersed 
into set activity in my case it is filming when I'm recording a video most of the time I'm so focused with recording a video that I'm rarely distracted by anything else I'm so focused most of the time when I'm recording that 9 out of 10 times I try to keep this flow state when I'm going into the edit so I go immediately into the edit when I'm done recording a video because I know that if I'm into the flow state and I go into that state into my edit I know that I will be very focused when I'm editing as well so I try not to take a break between recording and editing especially when I'm in the flow state because I know if I do that the chances of me finishing set video finishing set edit will be quite high so right now we are going to dive a little bit more into Premiere Pro itself because I think inside of Premiere Pro there are a lot of things you could do to improve your editing speed to make your videos much faster so Premiere Pro the first thing I want to mention is the layouts or workspaces how we call it in Premiere Pro so the workspaces are the spaces you are in where you can do specific tasks for example you have your editing workspace where you are focusing on editing and cutting up your footage and things like that you have another workspace called color which is specifically made for coloring your footage or color grading your footage but you have each individual workspace for each individual task and i like to have my workspace my layout on the screen to be all workspaces so i like to have everything on my screen at the same time and it looks like this and the reason why i love to have that is first of all when i switch between workspaces it takes quite some time time for my laptop to switch between workspaces and make the layout complete so it takes around a minute sometimes just to switch between workspaces and one of the reasons why I like to have this type of layout is it doesn't take me long to find the things I need to use for example when I want to have warp stabilizer the only thing I have to do is go to the right hand side of my screen I have to go to the effect I need to type in warp stabilizer and drag it onto my clip and this sequence of actions only takes like five to seven seconds so it doesn't take me a lot of time because i don't have to switch between workspaces all the time i have everything on my screen so i can do everything faster than i would be if i would be switching between workspaces this is the way how i do it this is the way how i customize my premiere pro to work for me but not everybody likes this way everybody has their own way of customizing their premiere pro layout so try to find a way that works for you that's efficient for you so let me know in the comment section down below what your workspace looks like or your layout or do you switch between workspaces how do you going about it in terms of workspaces and switching between color workspace to editing workspace and things like that let me know in the comment section down below so the second thing in premiere pro is shortcuts and for the people who don't know what shortcuts is shortcuts is just an alternative way to do a certain task in premiere pro but instead of using your mouse you use buttons on your keyboard so for example if i want to cut a clip i use my mouse i use the marker in my timeline to go to the specific place where i want to cut the video but instead of using the razor tool i rarely use the razor tool i always use control k just to cut the clip so after that i also use the backspace to delete everything behind the marker so that is my way of cutting videos or cutting clips i should say there are a lot of different shortcuts you can use to do a specific task for example when you want to open up the audio clip mixer you click on shift 9 when you want to open up the effects panel you can use shift 7 if you want to paste the attributes on a different clip you use ctrl alt v as you can see you have many different shortcuts for a lot of tasks so if you know these shortcuts or if they become second nature to you you can edit a lot faster because you can execute those tasks a lot faster so we'll leave a link in the description down below to a website which shows all of the premiere pro shortcuts for apple and windows but i highly advise learning some shortcuts because it will it definitely will 
make your workflow much more efficient and much faster. So another thing I do which helps me a lot and keeps me organized but also makes me work very fast and very efficient is adding my music at the end of my video. And the reason for that is I use music in a specific way. So I don't just drop music in my timeline, lower the volume a little bit and leave it at that. That's not what I do. What I do is I use music in specific places. So for example, when I'm doing things like this, I add some music. When I'm transitioning from one place to another, I also use music. So I use music in a specific way. And this is the way how I do it. But in doing this, I need to watch the whole video from the beginning till the end to see where I need to place the music. I hope you guys caught that because I have to watch the whole video in order to put the music in specific places. So not only do I add the music, but I also watch the video from beginning to end to see if there is anything else I need to fix. So when I see any mistakes, I, I can also fix it while I am adding music. So I essentially watch the video back only twice when I'm adding the music. Then I rewatch the video one last time just to see if everything is correct. And if everything is correct, I start exporting it. So instead of rewatching the video 10 times, I'm now rewatching it just two times. So editing your music at the end is the way to go for me. likes to listen to the sound of rain because when I'm editing or when I'm chilling here on my balcony I really like the sound of the rain it's just it's weird like am I the only one let me know in the comment section down below but the last thing but certainly not least it's the most important thing in my opinion because it will help you over time edit much faster which is try to find your own editing style and finding your own editing style is quite hard it took me like six months to finally figure out the way how I want to make my videos. The reason why I say try to find your own editing style is because when you have certain things you do in your certain way, you will do that every single time so you don't have to think about it every single time you're editing. For example, when I edit my text, I always make it flicker in and out of the screen. So I use the same flickering effect for my text, but I also use the same sound effect for my text when they are flickering. That is one way how I do things, but that's part of my style. So every single time I need to add some text in my videos, I already know what I'm going to do so I don't have to think about it and I'm just doing it. Another example is when I'm doing my transitions, when I'm walking in and out of frame, I already know how to edit it. So when I come home, I know exactly how to do things. So I don't waste time thinking about how I should do things and how I should edit things because I already know it because it's already part of my style. So my point is try to find your own unique style. And I say unique, but trying to be unique is very difficult and that's a whole different video in of itself. So it doesn't necessarily have to be unique but try to find your own way of editing your videos because if you do, that will help you big time over time because it will take time. I, it took me like almost a year to find my own video style, how I want to make my videos and how I want to edit my videos. So it took me a year, so don't rush yourself. You will definitely find your own video style, but it is important for you to try to create and develop a video style. So I wanted to make this video just because I'm in this position where I don't have a lot of time and I still want to make videos so I have to do with the time that I have. So I wanted to share some tips and some adjustments I made in my workflow in order to edit much faster so I can still make videos even though I don't have a lot of 
time and I think that some of you guys are in the same position where you don't have a lot of time but still want to make videos so I think those tips I shared with you today are very helpful that being said i hope you guys like this video if you did make sure to leave a like smash that subscribe button if you haven't and if you enjoyed this video leave a comment down below do you have a lot of time right now to make videos don't you have a lot of time right now to make videos let me know in the comment section down below and i will change my sock right now because uh, it's wet and i hate my socks being wet and <laughs> i see you guys in the next video